Chapter 4. Simplify it. Sometimes we are dealing with very complicated problems and we don't even know how to start. In this case, I will suggest two methods to simplify a very complicated problem. And it depends on the nature of the problem, which way we will use to simplify it. The first way is called chunking. It's like breaking down the problem into smaller pieces. And for each piece, we will be solving it in a similar manner. Another way to simplify a problem is by moving, removing, or adding a part. After we move a part, or remove, or add a part, we will change the problem slightly into something that is much easier to handle. Here's an example. The houses on Broadway Avenue are numbered consecutively from 1 to 150. How many house numbers contains at least one digit of 4? Let's try to understand what this problem is asking of you. So we have a street that has houses and the houses have house numbers and the house numbers are from 1 to 150. So we are asked to find out how many house numbers contains at least one digit of four. Mm, before we start working on this problem, let's think of some possible house numbers that contain at least one digit of four. So let's take a look. So a few examples are house number four, 14, 24, 40, 41, 114. All these house numbers have a digit of four. So how do we count how many such numbers are out there? Well, you can list it up from 1 to 150 and then just count it one by one, but that's going to take a lot of time. And if for some reason you got a hiccup at some point, you have to restart counting again. So this is not a good way to do it. So we will break this problem down into smaller parts. And we will break it down by the place value of the digit 4. So in the examples that I have listed here, the 4 can be in the 1's place like, or the unit's place. It also can be in the 10's place. So let's count by that. So I'm going to use a table to help me do that. So in my table, I have listed the position of the digit 4, which can be in the 1's place or in the 10's place. And then I'm going to count the house numbers with the digit 4 in that place. So house numbers with digit 4 in the 1's place could be, I'm listing them out without missing anyone, 4, and then I move on to 14, I move on to 24, all the way to 144. In each group of 10, like in each decade, there is a digit 4 in the fourth, uh, in the ones unit. So from 1 to 150, there are 15 groups of 10. It's like 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, and so on. So we have 15 groups of 10. So if you count that 15 groups of 10, each group has a 4 in the 1's place, then there are 15 such house numbers. All right, let's move on to the 10's place. Now in the 10's place, this time, 4 has to be in the 10's place. So we have 40, 41, and so on, all the way to 49. And we also have 140. This 4 is also in the 10's place because we are counting House numbers from 1 to 150, it covers that. 141 all the way to 149. And there are 10 numbers in this group, in the 40s group, and also 10 numbers in this 140s group. So we counted a total of 20 house numbers that have 4 in the 10s digit, in the 10s place. Now, be careful now, because we are going to count how many don't jump into the conclusion right away. Oh, so we have 15 and 20. The answer must be 35. 
not so fast because we're going to see some repetition. Notice that there is overlapping in the two groups because house number 44, which will be in the ones place group, and 144, you see I have 144 listed here also. These two numbers are counted twice because there is a 4 in the tens place and in the ones place. So 44 will also be somewhere here. 144 will also be somewhere here. So if we just add up these two numbers, then we will be over counting. So just take out these two numbers. So the number of house numbers containing at least one digit of 4 is 15 plus 20 and subtract the two repeated ones. So the answer is 33. Okay, now it's your turn to practice what you just learned. In example 1, which refers to this example we just saw, how many house numbers contains at least one digit of 1? Now you can't copy everything from what we just saw, but you'll be using similar idea to solve it. It's a slightly different from what we just saw. Try it out. When you are ready, you can move on on the video. Okay, so this is how we will solve it. Again, we use a table to help us out. We learned how to use table to list things in our last uh, chapter. We will also list the digit position. Now, note that this time, besides one's place, tens place, we also have the hundreds place to consider because we are having the numbers from one to 150. So the one can also appear in the hundreds place. So now I have three rows to help me keep track of such house numbers. And use the same way that we did the last example. House numbers with digit 1, I have 1, 11, 21, 31, and so on, all the way to the last group of 10, which is 141. Again, I will count 15 ones in um, those numbers. And then I move on to the tens place. Now, in the tens place, where one is in the tens place, I have one zero, one, 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 two, like 10, 11, 12, all the way to 19. And then I will have something similar in 110 uh, group. So I have 110, 111, 112, and 119. We can quickly cross out those that we see repeated. So I quickly noticed that 11, since it has the one in both the ones place and the hundreds place, I'm going to cross it off so that I don't need to subtract it later. I can just subtract it right now. Same for 111. So that way, I counted 18 such house numbers. And let's move on to the hundreds place. Now, in the hundreds place, I start with 100 all the way to 150. And there are all together in this range, I will have 51 such numbers. But again, I don't want to count 110 all the way to 119 because those numbers are already considered here because their tens place also has a 1. And I also want to skip those numbers with a 1 in the 1's place so, th so that I don't double count those numbers as well. And there are 10 numbers in this group from 110 to 119 and 4 numbers that are um, having one in the ones place. You see that I am omitting 111 because 111 is already in this range. So when I stop counting that number, I don't want to uncount it twice. I just need to uncount it once. So 10 here, 4 here. So I need to take my 51, subtract the 10 and the 4, and I will get 37. So the answer to this problem is you just add up these three numbers and then you will get the answer is 70. Now let's look at another way that we can simplify a problem. In this way, we're going to either move, remove, or add a part to make the problem a little bit simpler to handle. In this example, I have 
a void cube, and the void cube is actually shown here in this picture here. It's a cube that has holes, and you can see through it from all directions. There's a hole for you to see through to the other side. And this void cube is measured 3 cm by 3 cm, and it's dipped into a container of red paint. So I'm going to recolor this cube into red. And what is the surface area that is painted red? When I dip this thing into red paint, well, the whole thing will be changed to red. But it has holes in it. That means the inside of the cube will also be painted red. And I'm asked to find the surface area that is painted red. Now, how can I simplify this problem? Well, this is how I can simplify it. Think about a cube that has no hole. If the cube has no hole, that means this part, imagine that there's no hole here, no hole here, here, and then the bottom, the, the right, and the back. Imagine that it's all covered up. Then it's easier to find out the surface area of this cube. So in this case, it will be each face is 3 by 3, and I have 6 faces in a cube, so it would be 3 by 3, and then times 6, that um, square centimeter. So it's 54 square centimeter. After I got this thing without the hole, now let's consider the effect of the hole. How much surface area do I gain by having those holes? So this is what I got. For each hole, I remove one square centimeter here. And what have I gained? I would have gained four square centimeter because it's the inside, top, down, left, right. I gained those four parts. Right? I lose one small square area, but I gained four. So the net effect of that, so the net gain of that is three square centimeter. And now, since I have altogether six holes, all right, and three are not shown here, but you can imagine that I have six, I have six such holes, that means my net gain is 18 uh, square centimeter, or I will say three times six, I just need to add it to the original um, surface area that I found earlier without the holes, and I get 72 square centimeter. So this is how we use moving, removing, or adding a part to simplify a problem. Now it's your turn to try out this practice. Four people can sit around a square table. If two such tables are put end to end, then six people can be seated as shown. How many such tables are needed to be put end to end so that 24 people can be seated? Now pause the video and think about it. and Try it out yourself. When you're ready, you can resume the video. Okay, so here's how we can solve this problem. Now, before thinking about adding the tables and counting the people, well, of course, we're not going to draw all these people and the tables. Um, notice that we can remove two people at the two ends, as shown below. Because these two people, they are making the situation complicated. So forget about these two people for now. And we see that each table can seat two people. right? When I add a table, I can add two more people without counting the two people sitting at the end. And now I need to seat 24 people. So two people will be sitting end to end. That means I need to put the other 22 people on the top and on the bottom, as shown in this picture. If I need to seat 22 people and I know each table can seat two, that means I need 11 tables to do that. So this is how we can use removing a part to solve, to simplify this problem and solve it. 
Here are some homework for you to try out. You are highly encouraged to use what you just learned to solve them. Pause the video and try it out. When you are ready, you can move on. So here are the solutions. Did you get it? I hope you are having fun learning today. Don't forget to check out my other videos on problem-solving strategies. Goodbye.